Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing continuous functions. Now, we've got one final theorem that I want to prove about continuous functions in this video, which is that um, if you compose two continuous functions together, you end up with another continuous function. But just before we do that, let me just make a remark on this example again, okay? You could have done this actually for any set. It really did not matter that this set that we'd chosen was the set that contained 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so take whatever set you like, however big you want it. Make this set both the domain and codomain. Put the discrete topology on one of the sets, maybe the domain, and put the uh, chaotic topology on the codomain and um, then define the function between them just to be this really simple identity map. And the forward function will be a continuous function because it will always be the case that if we've got the chaotic topology here, the only two subsets we'll have are the empty set and the entire set, which will have pre-images, the empty set and the entire set back here in the discrete topology, and therefore it will be a continuous function. But swap it round the other way, and you've got no hope whatsoever because the uh, discrete topology will have the singleton sets in and uh, those will be mapped onto obviously singleton sets back here because this is just the identity map, it's inverse, uh, and those are obviously not in the chaotic topology here. So you can generalize that. Okay, it didn't have to be this simple set one, two, three, it could have been any set you liked. Okay, right, so let's turn over the page and then go over the final theorem that I want to discuss in this video. Okay, so what I'm now going to discuss is the composition of two continuous functions. So firstly, let's start off by drawing a picture. So, we have got some topological space here, x uh, is the set, and then we'll have some topology, tau x, here. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a function f, which is going to map this topological space onto another topological space here, which we'll call y, and then it'll have topology tau y, and let's say that this function is continuous, just like what we've been doing. Okay, so firstly I'll just colour this in, so here is my topological space x in red here, and here is my topological space y here in orange. Now, let's say we also have another function, which we'll call g here, which maps the topological space y here onto a final, third and final topological space, which we'll call z, and we'll give it the topology tau z here. Okay, and I will denote the z topological space here uh, in purple. Okay, right. Now, uh, what we want to show is that the composition of these two maps, which I will call g after f, like so, so g composed with f, so this means firstly do f and then do g, which is a function which will map all of the elements of the topological space x with the topology tau x onto the topological space z with the topology tau z, I want to prove that that is going to be a continuous function, provided that f and g are both continuous functions between these uh, topological spaces. Okay, so I want to prove that the composition of two continuous functions is always a continuous function. Okay, so firstly let me just make sure that everyone understands this composition of the two functions. So, this function f will take every element of the set capital X and map them onto elements in capital Y. The function g will then take every element in capital Y and map it onto an element in capital Z. Okay, so if I have some element little x here, starting off here, I will be able to map it into y, and it will become f of y, and then I can map it further, because this is now an element of y, I can map this further, I can get to g of f of y, and this is what I mean Oh, whoops, sorry, I've changed my notation here. It shouldn't be f of y, f of x, rather. Okay, so replace that with x there. Okay, so I map x into y, which will be f of x. Then I can map f of x into z by acting g on f of x to get g of f of x. Okay, so that'll be my answer for what x is going to be mapped onto in uh, the topological space z with the topology tau z. Okay, right. So it is a nice function, is the first thing to say. This makes sense as a function. It is going to take every element of my domain, the set x here, and map it onto an element in the set z. Okay, so it's a perfectly good function. 
Now what we want to do is show that if this is a continuous function between these two topological spaces and this is a continuous function between these two topological spaces, that the composite of the two, which is going to go from the set capital X to the set capital Z, is also going to be a continuous function between these two topological spaces. Okay, so intuitively the reason that this is true with my informal intuition about continuous functions is that we know that if f is continuous, that if we have two points that are going to be next to each other in this red topological space here, so let's say that these two are next to each other, say so they've got a little line drawn between them, we know that the informal intuition for this is that if these two points are next to each other in this topological space, then if f is continuous, their images, f of x and f of x bar here, will be next to each other in this second topological space, the topological space y here, and then what we know is that if g is continuous, then f of x and f of x bar, which are uh, next to each other in the topological space of y, will then end up being next to each other in the topological space of z here. So here is g of f of x, and then we'll have g of f of x bar here as well, okay? made it a complete mess now, and they'll be next to each other over there. So intuitively that's the answer as to why uh, the composition of two functions is continuous, um, if they're both continuous, because if this one's continuous then two points that are next to each other will be carried to two points that are next to each other here. If this one's continuous, then these two points that are next to each other here will be carried to two points that are next to each other here. So overall, these two points that are next to each other in the original domain will be mapped onto two points that are next to each other in the final codomain over here. Okay, so that's the intuition. And uh, it is a very simple thing to prove with the rigorous definition of continuous functions. Okay, so let's quickly do that then. So, what do we need to prove if um, we're going to prove that this mapping g after f is going to be a continuous uh, function between uh, these two topological spaces? Well, we need to prove that if you take any open set, uh, and I'm wondering what to call this open set, we'll call it w. So, for all w that I can take from the topology tau z, okay, so I take any open set in my final z topological space over here, I want to prove, so to show, I'll put this here, to show that the pre-image of this under the mapping g after f, so g after f inverse of w, I need to prove that that is going to be an element of the topology tau of x. So I need to prove that for this composite map, um, that the pre-image of any open set in the z topological space is going to be an open set in the x topological space. Okay, so this is what I want to show. Okay, so how am I going to go about doing that? Well, of course I'm going to use the fact that these two maps are continuous. Okay, so if I want to try and construct the pre-image of a subset capital W from uh, the set capital Z, then what I can do is I can say, okay, what's the pre-image of that in this middle uh, topological space here, so in the set Y, and then I can ask, okay, this middle subset here, what's the pre-image of that uh, in the uh, domain over here, the set X? So I'm going to break it up now uh, and go through my orange set here. So basically, this pre-image of the subset W under the map G after F is going to be equal to the pre-image of W under the map G here, so it's going to be G inverse of W, which will be a subset of capital Y, and then what we'll want to do is take the pre-image of G inverse of W under the map F, okay, to finally get what the pre-image is in the uh, set capital X here. Okay, and we want to prove that that's going to be an open set in the topological space capital X here. Well, this is very, very simple to do because, look, if we take an open set in the topological space Z here, then because G is continuous, then the pre-image of that in the uh, set capital Y here, in this topological space capital Y here, will be an open set. Okay, because this is a continuous map between these two, and that's exactly the definition of a continuous map between these two. So we'll get an open set in this topological space Y. Then, if we take the pre-image of that 
in the topological space capital X here, then because F is continuous, that will then be an open set in capital X, because the set that we had in here, the intermediate uh, pre-image, uh, this was an open set in the topological space Y, and we know that the pre-image of any open set in Y will be an open set in X. Okay, so indeed, we, by going through our intermediate topological space Y here, we can show that any open set here has as its pre-image in the topological space X another open set. So indeed, it is the case that if we have two functions, capital F, or little f rather, and little g, which are continuous functions between these topological spaces, and we compose them together to get the composite function, then that new composite function will be a continuous map from the topological space X to the final topological space Z. OK, and that's a very important theorem. And with that, we will end this video on continuous functions in topology.